Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time or day you're re- watching this. This is Good Morning Black People with Morgan Reese. And I am your host, Morgan Reese. How, how are you guys doing today on this fantastic, fulfilling, amazing Friday? It's the end of the week, guys, and it's time to relax and enjoy your weekend. Well, today, guys, I have an amazing special treat. I am bringing to you the amazing Bobby I. Booker. She's an award-winning Philadelphia-based multimedia journalist and radio personality whose velvety voice has been a mainstay in the Delaware Valley for over two decades. In 1981, Bobby launched a professional broadcast career with WRTI as a news reporter and in 1999 was named co-host of Ovations. Well, guys, without me even saying any more, Philly's own award-winning Bobby Booker will meet with our special guest right after this. Thank you. It's Good Morning Black People with your host, Morgan Reese, author, podcasting host, online personality. Good Morning Black People discussing social views, today's news, and interviews. Subscribe today at YouTube at Good Morning Black People. Good morning, Ms. Booker. Hello, good morning. And 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 as I would say, black with a capital B, all day, always. So oh, this look, is- I love that already. I'm taking that trinket. I'm taking that trinket. <laughs> well, you know, one of my uh, one of my uh, decades long battle, and I mean a couple of decades, was uh, fighting with the Associated Press mm-hmm. um, to capitalize the B in black. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't think that should be a fight, but it was a fight. And um, uh, finally, a number of my colleagues, um, um, not just across the United States, but in Canada as well, um, were a, a part of this pressure movement to force the Associated Press to acknowledge wow. and respect what was already happening in the Black press across both of these continents. Mm-hmm. The capitalization of being Black was a no-brainer. We see ourselves in that light. The AP's pushback and their excuse um, was that, um, uh, uh, you know, there was African American, mm. there were other titles, and it just, they were just resistant mm. uh, to the idea. Another part of their argument was that that means they would have to capitalize the W in white. We said, we don't care what you do with any of that. That's on you. We're talking about black. (laughs) What you do with that is is what you do with that. Mm -hmm. Um, But however, there really was no equalization because um, as it is for white culture in America, they almost always have um, uh, identifiers that they can lean on. They're Italian, German, this, whatever. So, you know, um, that was basically a BS argument. So um, uh, to our surprise and joy, um, this coalition of, um, of uh, Black journalists, uh, we uh, saw the announcement on Juneteenth of 2019 um, that the Associated Press had um, uh, finally uh, uh, changed its mind and capitalized the B in, in Black. So when I say good morning, Black people, I'm saying it all the way and strong with a capital B all day, all long, you know? All day, all long. That's right, Ms. Booker. Oh, my gosh. You, you said a mouthful. I'm not even going to say anything else behind that. I would like for you to... Introduce yourself to the world for everyone who's listening and let everyone know the phenomenal, amazing, talented Bobby Booker, who you are, that made you who you are. From my hometown, Philly, all day, every day. So we get mad love. Um, Can you please share everyone who you are and what brought you to this world of being a journalist, a radio host, and your amazing, talented person that you are? Oh, you, you, you know, you're so kind. That's it. I'm just going to go float, okay, with all of those wonderful accolades. 
And, you know, we, we can never hold each other up um, enough. That's the reason I, I'm here. That's the reason your invitation resonated with me because I, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of, of, of that whole belief that we have to hold each other up. And you mentioned my name, which is Bobby I. Booker. And I am um, lifelong Philadelphia, and I've escaped a couple of four times, but I've always come back um, um, because I really do believe in in uh, uh, the, the 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 mantra. You know, if um, uh, you, you know the the real way to solve a problem is to be there and 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 help be a part of that difference. Um, you know, I am also a lifelong journalist. I started writing at the age of eight, um, and it was really a part of my beloved, um, now deceased uh, father's uh, efforts to give me a way to deal with and cope with uh, the emotions of being a motherless child. I didn't meet my uh, birth mother until I was 13. My father was my primary caretaker. His mother relocated, reluctantly relocated um, from Birmingham, Alabama uh, at the age of 70 uh, to assist in, um, in rearing me. And I have never, ever forgotten um, um, that grace um, that I was so fortunate to have these people in my life because I was, I came along in my father's life when he was uh, in his fifties. So we're talking about older people being a part of my caretaking. And my grandmother, whom I'm named after, the I in my name is for Ida. She was born in 1894. Her grandmother was uh, enslaved and I've always considered myself honored to be five generations removed from enslavement, to have been touched by the hands of a person who was touched by a person who was enslaved, and to carry all of that energy, you know, into the future. That's how I see my role as a journalist and as a media presenter. I'm I'm just a small piece of this dynamic of helping to tell the story, maintain the integrity of this story, and then really pass it along to the future. Everything that I'm doing today is, is really for those who are going to come along in the tomorrow. And so it's with that sense of, of purpose that I exist and do what I do. Now, mind you, that doesn't mean it's all serious. I may be a warrior of sorts, but I'm, um, I opened this whole segment talking about a fight. Um, but, you know, it, it does come um, with knowing how to enjoy, embrace the joy um, that this life brings, but never, ever forgetting um, the, the the serious dynamics that shaped what brought Black people to this country known as America and what has um, shaped that dialogue about our existence here and still maintains what needs to be a battle when you look at what's happening in Florida, huh. um, when you look at um, these, these new um, uh, dynamics that are trying to control again our our history, which in our history is American history. That, that's the other crazy part about this, is that you cannot talk about Black people and, and not speak about America. So, you know, um, so again, it just underscores the importance of, um, of why I do what I do. I'm also an instructor, an educator um, uh, here in the region. That's a relatively new title for me. I never, um, I never saw myself formally as a teacher. Um, and uh, so I'm a professor of media writing. And I'm also a student because I have returned to school to uh, get my master's in journalism. 
And so um, I'm, I'm sitting in class with students who uh, have, have yet to, to ever work um, professionally. And I'm, I'm just going, I'm here to learn. And I am learning. Um, <laughs> it, it, is, it is so good to be around this, the, the energies that I'm encountering um, at this part of my life. Uh, having, uh, you know, I, I actually submitted a resume for a job and had to lob off like 20 years. Because, <laughs> you know, they said you're supposed to go back 10 years. And he was like, well, I've done a lot in the last 10 years. <laughs> I'm like, oh, boy, let me. So I, I just said to simplify it, I'll just uh, I'll sort of just cut off the first 20. I'll start around 1999. You know, in the last century, which is already its own thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, but that's a little bit about who it is that that I am. And I will will say this one thing about my my father, and I'll mention his name, Benny Booker, who really looked at ways to make sure that that I didn't hold on to despair. While my circumstances um, that surrounded my birth would would be considered harrowing, um, he refused to allow me to waller in in uh, self pity. Um, and of course, I, I I had a grandmother whose uh, uh, axiom was, you know, uh, idle mind is a playground for the devil. So that means I was a busy little bee, even oh, when I. Was- when I was a little BB, I was a busy little B. So I was I was always in involved in um, events. I learned how to garden as a child. I was always um, uh, taken places, allowed to explore beyond my neighborhood, and it was all because a black man saw beyond the limitation and. He came to Philadelphia as part of the Great Migration. So he refused to be limited in um, the place of his birth, which was the Deep South. And and with that in mind, he saw so many options for me. So every time I hear um, that that once a year when everybody is hollering, you know, with with MLK, I have a dream. Mm-hmm. Um, I always reflect that, you know, in in essence, I am that dream. I'm I am the dream of of Martin. I am the dream of all of my forebearers who who would relish this moment, but also understand that the fight continues. So that's that's a, a wee bit of what makes me me. Well, you know what? You're a unique on um, purpose, an individual on purpose. I promise you, Ms. Booker, you are definitely um, an icon in Philly. I know that. Um, Thank I was you. born in Brooklyn, but I was raised in Philly. So when I moved to Philly, it was in the mid 80s. Yes. So um, all of my, my kids are grown. So when you said 99, my youngest was born in 97. So, okay. Yeah. So that's how you, even though I look young, <laughs> in my mind, I feel like I'm younger. But um uh, I was a part of all that. So let me ask you a question. I'm going to pick your brain. Sure. You were a part of MOVE, the MOVE moment. Remember? When Mary I Good? was in Philadelphia. Yeah. During <laughs> a couple of the MOVE moments. Well, we want to talk about that iconic MOVE moment when Mary Good dropped the bomb on Ace Osage Avenue. <laughs> yes. Yes. Can you, can you share... Some of the things that you knew or you had some knowledge of. I know you, I'm digging. You wasn't expecting this. So that's what I tell all my guests. You never know what I'm going to pull out of my hat to talk, to talk to you about. Because I was a part of that journey in that world. I actually had a family member that lived right around the corner from that situation that took place. But for mm-hmm. coming to my, from a journalist from a point of view or a media specialist point of view or just a, a human, human being, an icon. Again, you are an old soul that in a young body. So you were a part of a lot of history in Philadelphia. Um, I want to hear your take and your thoughts and your views back in that time. If you can kind of dig back in that intelligent brain of yours and bring some things to the to the people for us to hear and, and learn some about. Because people say move. What was it? Oh, we all are, people in the South, of course, said we heard about that up there. And 
they bomb the street or something? What kind of stuff y'all do in Philly? And it's like, you know, we are who we are. <laughs> That's what makes us who we are. Well, you know, you know, it, it, as they, you know, say now, the term is it's complicated. And, um, you know, it is really that way when it, it comes to move. And especially if you uh, grew up um, during the era that they existed, um, you, you know, um, and, and I, I started out mentioning that I, I went through um, uh, both bouts of move. What happened in 85 was really a follow up to uh, uh, an egregious equally egregious situation that occurred in the 70s um, when uh, the, the first move compound was um, um, attacked and eradicated by the Philadelphia Police Corps that on the other side of, um, um, I think one person, well, a, a police man, um, died of probably friendly fire and nine move members were incarcerated and the building which at that time the house that they were living in was in the um uh it's over there palton village that's where it was at and they um and the next day mayor frank rizzo notorious mm -hmm. in and of himself mm -hmm. had <laughs> had the house raised so the property was leveled that means all of the the crime evidence everything was destroyed hmm. now hmm. now when i say it's complicated of course when i tell you all of that you're like you know let's go pro move move didn't make it easy though they didn't make it easy to um embrace and love them while um a, a number I'll say this, a number of the early MOVE members, especially the foundation members, were some of the most brilliant minds you would encounter. There's no question about that. They um, um, were the first in their families to attend college, They, um, which is why they could talk rings around most of those city officials and people that, that tried to, to talk to them. They were some smart cookies. But their lifestyle and some of the the ideas that they proclaim and 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 let's also be very honest and this is something that has always troubled me because the person who founded move vincent leapart um is non-black a white a white man who uh put together this ideology that um was followed by black people it's by a certain group of black people. So it's it's so that's why I said it's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> well, I'm glad you put that disclaimer out there in, in advance. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's complicated because Vincent Lippard changed his name to John Africa. And um it was he was the one who owned the homes, including the house on Osage Avenue that was eventually firebombed. Um you know, I, I can, I, I say this with the pro and con attached. Move, um, they were instigators. And I say that because, you know, they knew how to push buttons and the buttons they were pushing sometimes were the right buttons. There needed to be questions that were asked of our uh, civic leaders about things that were taking place in Philadelphia at that time. That said, they also push buttons to the, the point of, of no return where those um, uh, same uh, leaders were perplexed in how to deal with them. Because while idealistically um, MOVE had some ideas, I could say this, living next to them wasn't fun. Their neighbors were not very happy with what was happening. <laughs> and um, um, so, you know, a lot of what happened in 85 was under the uh, guise of um, 
of the neighbor's um, uh, constant complaint. And, and you could only imagine um, you've got a fortified house, it, a fortified, we're talking row homes, residential areas, you know, middle class um, um, regions, people who had, uh, Black people who had worked a lifetime to get a beautiful home in a, a nice neighborhood and, and suddenly um, have a barrage of, of uh, foul language being shouted from a roof on a, a bullhorn at all hours of the day and night. Mm. Uh, you know, children, um, you know, sometimes clothed, sometimes not, um, just running around in the streets. And before uh, uh, locks became a fashionable hairdo, <laughs> I remember. Um, <laughs> you know, move, move members, that's how they were identified. They were amongst the first people in the Philadelphia area to have locks. Um, the only people you would see come through Philly that would have locks um, would be like artists and musicians and folk like that, that were kind of on the more worldly tip. Yeah, and um, I believe I remember that now. That's right. Move had and and it was called that. It was like it was a move style. It was a move hairstyle. People didn't call it dreadlocks. They say, "Oh, you got that move hair." That's what they, you know. Um, so it was something that was challenging to to black people in Philadelphia as well. It's like you know, it was a love hate relationship. Um, but all of those challenges came to a forefront when um, the first black mayor of Philadelphia. Uh, made that decision to authorize um, the the bombing of um, of that home. Um, it was an action that not only destroyed the Move residents or headquarters, as they were as it was known. It also destroyed the sixty plus other homes on that block and the adjacent block. It was a fire that was allowed to rampage out of control for hours. I remember. Um, it it sadly resulted in the 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 death of of at least one individual and the emotional and physical scarring. If you look at Birdie Africa and Ramona Africa, Birdie Africa being the child uh, that was saved uh, out of that, and Ramona Africa, um, one of the adult leaders. Um, who always brandished her her the scars, um, the burn scars on her arms and and neck from from that situation, and and it also scarred a city. Yes, um, I remember that. I definitely remember that. I was young, but it um, was one of the reasons that I left this city. I could not imagine having a family and raising them um, in in such a situation. Um, but again, if we go back to that, it's complicated. <laughs> and I had to um, I, I had to deal with some things too, like where was my head and heart? Mm. And um, while I tend to travel the globe, um, I had to make a, a critical decision to come back to Philadelphia because of that aforementioned parent, mm. um, my beloved father, Benny Booker who had made this city his home. And I had to really uh, reflect if it's, you know, if, it, if it's good enough for him and he can manage to get through this, then I can manage to figure out a way to. So in the early 90s, I came back to Philadelphia, which was uh, uh, a whole other place. <laughs> that's when I, I was uh, I had my first child in that, that, that decade so I know all about that year for us for me at my age I was thinking I was having fun and being grown but yeah it was different, <laughs> very different. and I you know I, I, I came back I, and, and when I say a whole other place it was you know um, I, I would say it was it was around it, it was probably the 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 end zone of the bottom that Philadelphia had sunk to because at that point crack had, had hit the region. Um, I know crack hit Philadelphia in the late eighties, 
but by the early 90s, it was a full-blown, you know, uh, uh, issue. And it it was unbelievable. I, I, I came back into, I, I hadn't been gone exclusively from Philly. I would come back for a visit, but visiting is one thing. Living is a whole nother story. And, and so I, I looked around and, and saw just the devastation, um, especially in my community, in, in the black community. I was, I was, I, I was just, I, you know, I was breathless, but I was also determined. I said, Mm-mm, nope, you know, some, someone has to, someone has to stand up. Someone has to talk about the beauty that is still here. Someone has to talk about the righteousness that, that because there were still people in the neighborhoods, there were still people that were sweeping the streets, sweeping those vials up, still taking care of those family members that had been lost to this or or the the family members who had been abandoned by children who were lost to crack. So, you know, I felt it was my my role and my duty. And my way of giving back, my strength has always been as a writer and uh, working in media. So that became my purpose to show that, yeah, you know what? I don't care what you think. You know, we're we're still here. And then another big part of my um um my my self-described um agenda was to now tell these stories, to tell the stories of these these people, the good stories, not the focus on the crack addicts. Yeah, yeah, we know they're there and they're with you too. Hey, that this part. isn't a one note song. That part. You know? <laughs> that part. <laughs> You know, a glass mirror, there's a reflection back on you as well. (laughs) Okay. Okay. It's it's not, you know, um, but you know, my, my whole thing was to let, let's talk about the beauty in Philadelphia. So with that, in the the early nineties, I was on the scene as a new music genre was launched. When you, when you think about Neo soul, which now I hate to say it, Neo soul is, it's not a term that the neo soul artists embrace any longer. Not, not in the city. right. You you go to the UK and they're like, yes, we're a neo soul artist. But but I, I was I was on the, the scene when when uh, uh, Jill Scott was skinny and doing um, spoken word um, uh, um, um, what you call those slam yes. poetry slam. Yes, Down on yes. the street. I had opportunity um, to see her do that in person. Right. Oh, oh, she's she, oh, she's yeah. a she's a beast. She's what? a beast. In I fact, she when, she singing, when she started singing, when she started singing, I was like, I didn't know she could sing. Wait, we were all <laughs> each other. Like, when did that happen? <laughs> um, you yeah, know, when the know, when, know, when the yeah. room, uh, when the roots were were out there and Quest Love was uh, beating on um, upside down um, uh, buckets, that was and, my uh, driver days. Believe it or not, Miss Booker, right? I'm okay. a driver during that time. Believe it or not, okay. I worked for yeah. King Limousine, and I was I was honored to be exposed to those people. And my first you time seeing them, talking about. So yeah, I was on the set. Wow. And and I was I was on the scene and I was writing about this great music that was coming out of Philadelphia and I was sharing I'm I mean and I was writing we're, we're talking about I was writing for zines you know when people would would mimeograph you know they didn't even copy they would just mimeograph like these these um history uh, history <laughs> you want pull them together. And, and put them in bars and leave them at clubs. So I was writing for all of these zines. And then um, and the word got out to uh, New York. And I got picked up by some of the early dot-com news outlets. Urban box office and all of those things. There was a first wave of online news that um, uh, got wiped out in the early, in, in the aught. So 99, 2000 was when things got wiped out and then they rebuilt 
all yeah. over again. And I was a part of that too. And, you know, by then Neo Soul had become its own dynamic. The roots were big, Kindred, the family soul, mm. you know, Jill Scott was, yes. was all over. Yes. It was it was just a, a, a beautiful um uh thing. Uh so yeah, it's it, but again, that was a lot of memories, a lot of memories. <laughs> a lot of memories. But more than anything, highlighting the flowers and the cement, highlighting the beauty in 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 what was happening here. Because all of those artists I mentioned, they were talking about what was happening, but they also talked about love. They also talked about about ways to move beyond, you know, this emotional social crisis that we were facing. And because they were sharing their stories in the manner that they were, they were also offering a bomb to the public, to people who needed to, to have these elements to help them make it through the day. I, I was just, just a, a part of sharing a bit of that story because those stories also helped me to survive and make it. Um, but more than anything, I just wanted to be a part of shining again, a different light on the situation that was happening in Philadelphia. And, um, you know, we're, we're in a whole different state of mind. The crisis yeah. may have morphed, but we've moved past that point in time. And now here we are two decades into the 21st century and dealing with a whole different dynamic. So I'm just glad to be a part of it. <laughs> oh my gosh, you make me want to move back home, but <laughs> I love where I'm at. Believe it or not, I come home to visit every year because I have okay. uh, two siblings who I am guardians over. My, one of my siblings live in a group home. She has cerebral palsy and I have another one who has mental health issues. And I come home, I actually was just home on Thanksgiving. And I said, I'm going to make my plan to come back home in the summertime because, you know, the wintertime. And when I came back since COVID, because I had, wasn't, able to, wasn't able to come during COVID, and I saw how much the city changed because of COVID and how much things oh, yeah. were happening. I had family members calling me, telling me this. And I was like, I can't come. I can't come. As soon as I can come, then I'll see. And I went back to visit. And as you said, what it looks like now to me reminds me of how it probably looked like back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. back in the 90s. And I was like, uh, I can't really tell too many people about that. I can't take them to this side of town. I got to take them to the cleaner side. I'll take them further up City Line Ave or further up in Overbrook or somewhere where I don't want to take them to the old neighborhood. And or amazingly, amazing. You know what's really just it just blows my mind every day when I um, you know, if you go over to Fishtown, oh. what was what was a, I mean, you 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 wouldn't even go to Fishtown when I was a kid. No, no, no. First of all, you it's not that you wouldn't go, you couldn't go. It was I really I like that before I from there before I moved um from Philadelphia. I lived on Fishtown has been completely completely i mean it is it is not even a shadow of what it was it it is a um it's a foodie destination they've they've got so many great restaurants down there they, i mean craft things places to to go and sit down and have fun and nobody is giving you the side eye if you're not a part of because it's a very different dynamic and it sort of speaks to the the evolution of every city. You know, you never, I mean, because if you, you go back and talk to, to folk in Brooklyn, <laughs> Williamsburg, they'd be like, uh, I remember before, you know. <laughs> <That 20 part. laughs> right. I mean, you know, everybody has that story. Now, here's the real crazy and sad part about what I just mentioned with Fishtown, because Blocks away from that area, you know, if you get over to um, uh, K and A, still, you get to Kensington and Allegheny. It is an open drug market. Yes. It is. I so mean, that hasn't changed. <laughs> that hasn't changed. <laughs> that and you know what's crazy is that 
it hasn't changed and it's even worse. I mean, I I, I hate to, to say that, you know, the drug users of my era were a little more classy. That's but right. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll say this, they didn't shoot up in front of you. You might have known what they were doing, but you didn't see them doing it. You know, that's a whole different element. And now, you know, the situation at um, Kensington, Allegheny, I mean, it's, it's, it's worse than I've ever seen it in my lifetime. And I make myself go through that area. I'm driving now, so, but I make myself go through to keep myself grounded because it, there are dozens, sometimes hundreds, Mm-hmm. of drug abusers that are on the streets in, in varying forms of, you know, whatever their status is, um, you know, sometimes openly um, um, acquiring drugs and always openly using them. And I'm going, but, but here's the thing. The reason why I drive through that neighborhood because I will almost always see a household, you know, a man or a woman who is outside sweeping the street, cleaning their front, you know, their steps, you know, making sure their house looks decent, walking their children home through that madness. So they're, you know, and that is what it takes. You know, we have to always remember those silent heroes, the people who will never get the accolades they deserve, that are maintaining because they're, but by the grace of God, they are bringing along that next generation who will see through this and will leave that alone, will see the error of those ways. And more than anything, it's an indictment on this city. Because there is no way you can tell me mm. if if they were people that look like me primarily out there doing that, that that would be allowed to exist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we also got to call that out too. That part. Because, <laughs> because I, it, th- there would have been there would have been fire hoses. There would no way that would have been allowed to exist for so long. And I'm sure that eventually a change is going to come because it's been way too long. And if you compare that with what we first opened up and spoke about, you know, how can the political ramblings of uh, some esoteric um, um, Black cult um, Mm. be worthy enough of having a bomb dropped on it when when you've got a whole nother region where hundreds of of drug users are openly breaking the law by acquiring and using in a public situation and that's not addressed. Come on. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous and it's crazy. Miss Booker, (laughs) that's why I brought you on. That's what God connected us. I promise you. I promise you, because I'm doing because of that. <laughs> no, you're never that. That's why I was tasked with an assignment. And when I was tasked with that assignment, and I was directed towards you, and we made this connection, I promise you, it wasn't my doing. It wasn't your doing. It definitely was not, not my producer's doing. It was God's doing. And today, okay. you shared with us history. You shared with us hey, amazing truth. You- you know what you you mentioned you mentioned spirit and I'm going to share with you one of the things that that I do that also just keeps me grounded. I have a I I'm you know I'm a radio host. I'm a reluctant radio person too. <laughs> I was dragged kicking and screaming into radio. I that that's a whole nother story. It'll be 20 minutes. We'll do another show. We'll talk. Yeah, well, we are cuz I was going to ask you that already. I'm going to bring you back on. I would like to uh let let you come back. Oh. Hey, listen, I, I'm I'm about inspiring people to just maintain, but I have a program. It's called, and you mentioned Ovations, and now it's um, Spirit Soul Music because I'm always looking 
for the spiritual and socially conscious message in the music. And it's a music that we grew up listening to. If you think about um, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, if you think about anything that comes out of um, the Philadelphia sound and, you know, uh, think about a, a family reunion and, um, and the message that, that's in the music, um, there, there are prayers that these artists included. And if you go back and listen to any R&B and soul record <laughs> or CD, <laughs> Uh, I, 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 wouldn't say cassette, I wouldn't say cassette, but I don't want you know. Um, but if you go back and listen, almost every one of those artists had a spiritual or socially conscious song. It, if nothing else, was the last song on their album, almost always. We grew up listening to those sounds. We grew up listening to those messages. And I feel it's so important to continue to shine a light on those messages. So I have this program. There it is, Spirit Soul Music, Sundays, 6 to 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And of course, it's on replay, so you can go to the website and hear it. And again, just trying to, to I guess, highlight those flowers in the cement, you know, to showcase that, you know, we, it, it ain't always, it's not always that other, that it's really about the heart, soul, and mind. And sometimes we, we need to be nudged to that. So that's what I use that program to do, to help nudge people back to a more spiritual center so that they can, they, they have the tools they need to make it through this thing called life, because it can be a little tough. Come back to their roots. Come back to that. That's room. right. Well, Ms. Booker, how can anyone find you? We already we already put on your radio show. If they need to connect with you, follow you on social media. Um, oh yeah. You please share your um information. You are so amazing, Ms. Booker. I promise you, I'm so blessed <laughs> like, and humbled I, that God allow us to connect. When I come home, I'm hitting you up, girlfriend. We're gonna go out for dinner <laughs> or somewhere. You You've got all the good stuff now. And, you know, anybody can reach me. I'm, a, I, I'm one of those early adopters. So I'm on all platforms at Bobby, B-O-B-B-I, no E, Booker, B-O-O-K-E-R. So you can, you can find out, you can find me. And there's that other link that takes you to me. There you go. All of my goodies right there. <laughs> We are definitely getting together. I'm going to make sure I try to do it this summertime and we can connect again. And I definitely would love to invite you back on my show, but I would love to meet you in person. I probably met you in my past and you just didn't know it was me and I didn't know it was you. I talk, I'm, I'm playing with it in the atmosphere. We are definitely cousins because I have older generation cousins and we kind of vibe the same way. And I promise you, you're my family line. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to find this out. And I'm be like, look, I'm going to head up and see my cousin before I have to go see my siblings. And we're going to get together. Let's be down because we made this work in spite and despite the challenges. And boy, we, that's a whole other story. If the folk knew what we went through to make this happen. Um, we're going to talk about that on the next interview when I bring you back on. I am definitely going to want to stay in contact with you. And I, I am honored. I am blessed. I am and too. And I love this. Good morning, Black people. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good day. Just whatever you do, make it good. Oh, it's going to always, as long as I'm a part of it and I'm the host, all positive vibes, great energy, nothing else less, any all other stuff, leave it at the door. Because guess what? Dust myself off. How we always say, dust ourselves off and try again. I'm done. When you come back with a better attitude, then we can have a conversation. <laughs> Here you well, go. Guys, we're going to come to a close. Oh, my gosh. I am honored that we were allowed to. Icon, she's true history, Bobby I. Booker. Okay. I'm Philly's own. Oh my gosh, I got chills in my body right now. I'm like, I'm talking to one of my, and we talk about limousine, my limousine days and music days. So you already know where I was at. I was driving King Limousine back in the early 90s. Started off with Super Shuttle. So I'm going to tell you where I was at, what I was doing. Took a sabbatical oh. out of the office doing me, having some fun okay. and, and mingling with some, some good people, you know. So guys, mm -hmm. Please check this stream out. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I hope you got some history, some amazing trinkets to learn about Philly history. A lot of people talk about Philly and they talk about us Eagles fans. We Eagles all day, do or die. It don't even matter. Y'all can hate on us. It don't even matter. We are who we are. You talk about us throwing snow at the snowman, but we also have history in Philly. We have true history, true knowledge of people that don't know about our black community, the things that happened that people had misconceptions and you heard it from the own person who was a part of that those those journeys, those chapters. She was a part of that, Miss Bobby I Booker, guys. I again I appreciate you for joining my show. Guys, you check in, please look up Miss Booker. Check her radio show out. I done went on it already because I'm in the music. That's how I got some of those music to, to introduce her. You know I was paying attention. I do my homework. You know we intelligent on purpose. <laughs> Cousin, you know how we do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, thank y'all again for joining Good Morning Black People with Morgan Reese. Again, I am your host, Morgan Reese, and I am here to in I interview the amazing Bobby I. Booker, award-winning journalist and radio show host on WRTI. Please join her, follow her, stay in touch with history, guys. This is this is this is our icon. You are a true icon. I'm ready for you to get that award because when I when they when they announce it, I want to be at the show at the front row cheering you on, oh, yeah. cousin. <laughs> well, thank you guys again. Yeah, ourselves. We're gonna make an award. Darling. Heck yes, heck yes. You're gonna get a true icon award. That's what you're gonna get from my lips to God's ears. We're putting it out in the atmosphere. Thank you, thank you again, Miss Booker, for joining me and for taking out the time out of your busy schedule. So much love, so much love. And we will talk later on so we can figure out how we can connect when I come home to visit because I'm coming to see you. I mean that. You know, you know what I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. My accent right. is in my words. <laughs> oh, well, I got you. We, we're going on a tour. We're going to see some real good things here in Philly. I got there some go. stuff. There you go. You're going to take me some stuff that I probably forgot because I, I haven't been home in about 17 years, but I go. I come home every year pretty much. On the longest I had not been home was during COVID. I couldn't be, you know, wasn't able to go and my job and I was too fearful. So I did not come home, but back on, back on my regular um, schedule program, I look forward to seeing you and meet with you again. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Have an amazing weekend. Have an amazing weekend. <laughs> Love you so much. Yeah. We'll talk to you. Bye-bye. Thank you. It's good morning, black people. With your host, Morgan Reese, author, author, author podcast, 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 online personality. Podcast. Good morning, black people, discussing social views, today's news, and interviews. Subscribe today at YouTube at Good Morning Black People. I'm Morgan Reese, inviting you to tune in weekly for some empowering, enlightening, and embracing conversations to kickstart your day on Good Morning Black People.